Here are some properties of exponential functions, though. Um, so notice in this type of equation, the x is in, well, it's the exponent right there. The base is going to stay the same. The good thing about this, and especially for this class, is that we're only looking for bases that are greater than zero. All right? If the base is zero, it doesn't matter what the exponent is. We'll just have a flat line on that, right? So um, the base is going to be something greater than zero. If it's negative, right, it's going to make it really look really funky. And here are some features we have on this. So first of all, we can see that x can be any real number, negative or positive. We just kind of have to remember some of our exponent rules. If they are negatives or positives, really just old values because we get to choose what values we're putting in for the x. These are all one to one. All right. So if we took this, this line, this is the horizontal line test, right? And we're just checking to see if it's one to one. Well, we, we can scan this graph and we can see that it never crosses that horizontal purple line there one, uh, more than once. And same with this other one. If we scan this, we can see that it never crosses more than once. So it is good that it crosses once. But um, if it crossed more than once, then it wouldn't be one-to-one. -one. And then we can look at this. Uh, I've matched that purple line there with the x-axis. And we can see that this line now is, is kind of, it's getting close to that x-axis right there, but it will never cross. And that doesn't matter what the value of x is. And that is because the base is positive. So if it's positive, it will always be positive, no matter what the exponent is. Okay? If an exponent is negative, it does not affect the value of the base in terms of positivity or negativity. All right, And the same with this one right here. It gets really, really close to that x-axis. And as it turns out, if you went far enough to the right on a calculator, it would tell you that the value is 0, but it actually isn't. The calculator is just finding a number so close to 0 that it can't tell you exactly what it is. Of course, depending on what calculator you're using. All right, and then the domain, which is uh, our x-axis, or x-values, rather. We can see that this line will go as far to the left as we want it to. Now, it's climbing up this way, but that doesn't mean it's ever going to stop going to the right. And that's why our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, however, and that, that's kind of what we just talked about. If, if we look at this x-axis right here, this line gets really close to it, but it never really touches, depending on how thick your pencil is. As you can see right there, they touch. But that's just because I don't have any other smaller um, lines to draw on this. And that, that is why the range here at the bottom it's zero. Notice that it's a parentheses right there, which indicates that the zero is not included in the range. But as soon as we go any, anywhere positive of zero, then it will be part of the range. And we'll go all the way to infinity, which is why the line is going up. Uh, it's going up very fast. On this graph right here, this one that I did in green. See how the farther to the left we go? That's in the negatives for the x's. How the line is going upwards like this. So that's on that next problem that we're doing. Um, and it shows right here the base. If the base is between 0 and 1, then we get that type of relationship there. And also if b, the base, is greater than 1, then we get this type of relationship because the higher or the bigger the x values get, the bigger value we're going to get for the y's. That's because it's just the base to that, those big powers. All right, so let's look at this example. We have y equals one-fifth to the power of x. So to graph this thing, I would just use a table. So let's make ourselves a table. So with this table right here, um, 
Notice we're going to choose values of x on this because y is dependent on x, which kind of sounds weird, and that's from a lot of classes ago, but we can know that just out of good old common sense, I guess. If we choose values of x, then we're just going to take one-fifth, which we could put into the calculator, raise it to some power, and then find a value of y. In other words, all the calculating is going on with the x, not the y, right? So we're going to choose values of x, and we're going to find the y values. On the other hand, on this one, um, anything to the power of 0 is always 1, so that's nice. And we can put that into the table directly right now. If x is 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. But something else we need to notice about these fractions is that uh, if I have negative exponents, it's going to reciprocate the fraction, right? So if I have a negative exponent, instead of that being 1 over 5, I'm going to end up with 5 over 1 to some power, which really just would be 5 to some power. So if I have negative exponents for x, then I'm going to get bigger and bigger y values. That's what I was pointing out on that last slide. All right, so we should expect something that looks, you know, something like this based on that last slide, right? And right now we can graph 0, 1. So let me put that on there, 0, 1. Yeah, about right there. So let's find the other values. So I'm just going to choose values from 0, I'll go negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, then 1, 2, and 3, and see where that gets us, all right? <clears throat> so for y is, uh, I'm sorry, for x is negative 1, that'd be 1 fifth to the power of negative 1, and I'm focusing on the negatives right now because I know they should get bigger because we're going to reciprocate the fraction. So this really would just be 5 over 1 to the power of 1 which is just 5, so there's a negative 1, 5. Now, if you wanted to graph that, you could. I'm going to continue on with the table, though, and then graph these all as ordered pairs. So if I did 1 fifth to the power of negative 2, that's the same as 5 to the power of 2, which is 25. And same with negative 3. I got 1 fifth to the power of negative 3, which is the same as 5 to the power of 3. Yes, I am skipping some steps, right? Like, we could write this as a fraction if we wanted to, just to show that it's reciprocated. But hopefully we're beyond that point on this. So 5 to the power of 3 should be 125. And those two points aren't going to fit on the graph anyways. But it's, it's good to see that we can hopefully understand how that's working on in the table. The lower the x value gets in terms of negatives, the higher the y value should get. So what about when x is positive? So then we got a 1 fifth to the power of 1. Anything to the power of 1 is just itself. So that right there is a 1 fifth. Let's try 1 fifth to the power of 2. So that would be the same as 1 squared over 5 squared. So 1 over 25. This, by the way, is going to be extremely difficult to graph on this graph. And yes, if we did 1 fifth to the power of 3, you'd get 1 over 125 on that. I don't really know what the decimals are, I just know they're very small. Which is really why they get extremely difficult to graph. But now I feel ready enough to graph these. Alright, so I put that purple line there just to show it's... This line that we're going to graph is never going to cross that. Even if it touches it, it's just because, again, the point on this pen, if you will, is too big. All right, so let's start graphing these. So I got a, at, when x is negative 1, I get 5, right? So that would be this point or something like it right there. And then I got negative 2, 25, which would be even farther up than this. But I'm going to put it there just so I can hopefully help you guys see what is happening there. It's growing exponentially to the left, which is kind of a figure of speech for most of the time that we use that phrase. But in this case, it's quite literal. Uh, One-fifth would be 0.2, which would be already very close. 
I'm, I'm talking about one and one fifth this ordered pair right here. <clears throat> That's already very close to zero. Uh, two and one twenty fifth. What is that like? Point zero. Zero. Point zero zero four. That's very small. So I mean, it, it's hard to differentiate the difference between, at least on this graph, right? The difference between point two and point zero zero four, because that already is very small. Well, that's good enough for me, by the way. I don't need a graph three and one twenty fifth. One one twenty fifth. I can just see that this line right here is going to get smaller and smaller, or closer and closer to the x-axis to the right of the y-axis. And over here to the left, it's going to go up very quickly. I mean, you wouldn't have to show that on a test, right? You just show as far as you can go. Now, I think on the home, we're going to be a little bit easier to show these just because it's computerized. But freehand, it can be a little difficult, but as long as we got the table there, it should be very helpful.